I call that uh, order. I'm calling Ian Lee Galloway. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, as a member of, uh, of Parliament who has only experienced so far opposition, expecting a change in the near future, uh, but who has only experienced opposition so far, that the opportunities to experience real joy in this House have been few and far between. And I can think of moments like when we passed the Marriage Equality Bill. Uh, I can think of the, the moment where we managed to amend uh, the government's bill on zero-hour contracts so that we could get it so that it actually eliminated zero-hour contracts. <laughs> And I think of the night where we passed the Care and Support Workers Settlement Bill as a night, a government bill, no less, actually a government bill that we all celebrated as a night where we experienced real joy and celebration in this House because we, when we knew we were doing the right thing and we were righting a wrong which had existed for far too long. Well, tonight, sir, we are debating legislation that will ensure that that moment of joy never happens again. And that is wrong. And it speaks to the hypocrisy of that government, who celebrated and insisted that that was their win, when they then turn around and say they are going to pull the rug out from every other woman and every other group of women who attempt to achieve a settlement like it. And that is shameful. that is shameful. It is shameful. They should be ashamed of themselves for bringing this legislation to the House. Mr. Speaker, the previous, uh, the previous, the, the member who made the previous contribution made a, a brief acknowledgement of the gender pay gap. Uh, and the gender pay gap exists in New Zealand and it is persistent in New Zealand and it really doesn't matter how we compare with other countries. Our task in New Zealand is to eliminate that gender pay gap. And that gender pay gap is driven by two things. One is pay inequity and the other is pay inequality. And those two things are different. And I think it's important that the House recognise that those two things are different. And that is acknowledged in this legislation. So, pay, so unequal pay is when a man and a woman are doing the same job in the same business and they are paid different rates of pay for doing the same job. Pay inequity exists when professions, when professions that are female-dominated domin and male-dominated but scope to the same level of skill, the same, same level of education that is required, the same level of, of risk, the same nature of job, are paid at different rates because one is male-dominated and the other is female-dominated. And, sir, so while um, both exist and both need to be eliminated, the gender pay gap in New Zealand is predominantly driven by pay inequity. The difference between professions which are male-dominated and female-dominated and the different rates at which they are paid. And that is why those of us who are in the opposition are so distraught by the fact that the government has set this hierarchy that, sets, that requires uh, women, people who are attempting to uh, make a pay equity claim to have to look within their own profession, within their own industry, before they can start to make that comparison across industries. Because largely, when you look within an industry, when you look within a profession, you will not find that inequity and you will not find the appropriate comparisons to make because of the nature of the inequity, which is that female-dominated professions tend to be paid less than male-dominated professions. Now, so before I came into this House, uh, I was lucky enough to be an employee of the New Zealand Nurses Organisation. Uh, and unfortunately, I wasn't an employee of the Nurses Organisation when they had the big pay jolt for nurses. It happened just before I started working for them. But uh, I learned a lot about that pay jolt when I was working for the NZNO. And what was at the core of that was their ability. That wasn't even a pay equity claim. That was just bargaining. But at the core of that, was the nurse's ability to demonstrate 
that because their profession was a female-dominated profession, they were paid less than a profession that scoped to the same skill rate, the same risk rate, the same tasks and, and challenges that were faced in a male-dominated profession. In that case, it was the police. And other professions were included as well. Um, but that was absolutely core to their ability to make that claim and to be able to win that claim. And again, to achieve something that everybody celebrated. I'm sure the National Party celebrated it back then when they were in opposition as well. That finally nurses were being paid appropriately. That could not have happened had they not been able to make the case that a pay inequity existed between the nurse's profession and an equivalent male-dominated profession. And that is why opposition members of parliament oppose this bill. That's right. Because it is specifically designed to stop a settlement like the care and support workers settlement happening again. So it actually flies in the face of what the International Labour Organisation tells us we should be doing. To, to achieve pay equity. The ILO specifically says that comparisons should be able to be made across industries. Now, I know that members opposite will say that this bill allows for it, but why have the hierarchy in place in the first place? There is no place for it. It doesn't actually make any sense unless the purpose of the legislation is to diminish the opportunity to make a pay equity claim. The sad thing about it is that the joint working group actually seemed to be making really good progress and seemed to have reached agreement around these principles. It was only at the 11th hour that the government withdrew their support. And I want to hear from just one member opposite why that happened. Why was it that the government that seemed quite happy with, uh, with, with reaching consensus around all the principles, why was it that this one in particular, this question of the proximity of the comparators, suddenly changed at the last minute? It's unfair, it's unreasonable, and it simply doesn't make any sense. So what we should be debating tonight is not the repeal and replacement of the Equal Pay Act, but in fact amendments to the Equal Pay Act to make equal pay and pay equity claims easier in the future. But the fact that the government has gone so far to remove the piece of legislation under which the care and support workers settlement was achieved and replace it with something which actually diminishes working women's ability to take a claim, I think, speaks volumes about what the government is actually trying to achieve with this legislation. So, sir, I want to support the commitment made by Jacinda Ardern in her, in her contribution on, on this debate this evening. Sir, if a Labour government, if a Labour-led government is elected at the upcoming election, which will be before this legislation has any opportunity to be considered by the Select Committee, that will be the end of the line for this bill. And, it, and we will introduce amendments to the Equal Pay Act that actually achieve what the government claims to be achieving, making it possible for more working women to be able to make equal pay and pay equity claims, to be able to actually achieve that... Um, that, that I was going to say Nirvana, it shouldn't be Nirvana, it should just be the way it is. Just be the way it is in the 21st century. Normal, no, we, let's achieve normalcy. Let's achieve normalcy where it doesn't matter where a, whether a, a profession is male dominated or female dominated, that pay equity can be achieved. And it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman doing a job, that equal pay can be achieved. That is our commitment. We're not going to muck around with this. We're not going to have. Um, silly hierarchies, silly rules that set the bar too high to make it nearly impossible to actually establish a claim. We want to make it as easy as possible because quite simply on this side of the house we do believe in pay equity, we do believe in equal pay 
and we believe in working alongside those who have driven this issue for years and years and years to put in place the mechanisms that will achieve it. And if the parties opposite, if the National Party in particular, truly believes in equal pay and pay equity, then they will join us in doing that. Bigger. I call Jonathan Young. Sir, we do have an election.